I am very excited today because one of my favorite things to do all time in modern Minecraft is mob farms because there's so much possibilities to make them sophisticated, grand, and just, just smart. I like, I like my computer that very timely just turned off. So last episode was obviously the recap sode. Someone in the comments said something very clever along those lines. The recap sode of the mega stream day in which I collected a lot of things. Hopefully un un enough things to make things happen today and to design a very sophisticated and smart mob farm. Now, I have only been, like, sk skimming over my things ever so briefly, and I'm not good with maths. <laughs> I'm not good at all with maths, so I might have got these things wrong. But let's see if we can make this happen. So I am going to unlock today mob spawners. I spawn are quicker than vanilla spawners. Like, be configured with a mob egg to spawn the mob you want. Mob eggs can be swapped out whenever you want to. Now, there is other methods of farming mobs inside Vault Hunters. You can do it the vanilla way and use something like Create to kill the mobs or any other mods to kill them. Or you could use Kaecherium, which is a passive mob farm that doesn't require you to set up much, but is a considerable amount slower than an ice spawner. I think that ice spawners gives the most uh, creative, interesting way of making a sophisticated mobs wanna so i am going to need three knowledge stars to unlock that which is not bad at all and as i say i should have a lot of resources so i definitely have those three. Oh, actually i should check oh there's a pog it's a pog in the black market and vault diamond do i buy four vault diamonds hmm computer do i need more i don't need more vault diamonds right now okay no let's stay focused let's chomp my knowledge and unlock mob spawners now, this makes the production category super expensive with the plus 12, which, I mean, this is probably the best uh, category for, like, making farms and feeding your crystal needs. And also, I got a new transmog set, the zombie set. Yeah, I could actually look like a full-on zombie. <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna try this head out. I don't think I've ever tried this head out. Zombie head? Yep, <laughs> this is Zombie Skull 2000. <laughs> It actually doesn't look too bad, but I, I want my face back. All right, so stage two is handling. I want mods that help me uh, pick up pick up the loot from the mobs. That's always a problem. Pick up experience and kill the mobs or help me kill the mobs. And what I am planning on doing is getting probably my favorite mod in this mod pack, modular routers. And this is going to cost me three. So that's also something that I definitely have with my poor math skills figured out that I have. So three of these and then just more of these and boom. That's three more knowledge. And I become wiser with the knowledge of modular routers. I'm smarter now. <laughs> okay, the final piece to the puzzle is that I want to use vector plates. These things here, which moves mobs and entities around in a very efficient way. And to do that, I need dark utilities, which is also in the handling group. So that has a plus five to one. So it has six in cost. And this is where it gets a little bit spicy. Do I have enough? I definitely have enough knowledge uh, shards because I have these here. So do I have enough of this? I think I do. Yes. Yes, I do. I think I do. Do I? Did I calculate correct? I calculated correctly. So I, I over, I under calculated. No, wait. I, I just craft, I crafted five. <laughs> it's got showing off his math skills on the camera. <laughs> All right. So that's six points and... That means that I can unlock dark utility. Now, this is very much not a necessity, by the way. And it might even be considered a bit stupid. But it's just gonna be it's just gonna be so much easier and more fun to make a sophisticated mob farm with this with vector plates. So I'ma do it. Now comes the interesting stage. Do I have enough resources to craft the different components and stuff that I will need to set up my mob farm? And I'm asking that because I know that the first mod we unlocked, the ice spawners, is very expensive to craft. We need to craft the survival spawner. Yeah, this thing here, look at this. We need echo pogs, we need black chromatic steel, and we need cage pieces, which is another four black chromatic steel. Now, luckily, I did do some bounties, so I do have four of these, and they cost one perfect black opal each, I think, so 
We have enough black opal, and then the other thing we would need is chromatic steel. Remember how I've been collecting this as much as I can, and just saying, like, I'm valuing this, I've been valuing this the highest of all things, material-wise, because I know that it's just something that you use so much of. So, that's another four, we got that. This is actually a craftable resource, yeah, this is craftable, so that's... How many do I need? I need eight per one, and then I need four for this. Eight times four... Oh, yeah, and there's a troll here. They only stack to seven. Wait, I'm confusing myself here. Wait, one, two, three, and four. These only stack to three. And that means that now I only need the Echo Pog. I mean, only. Uh, Echo Pogs are quite expensive. Luckily, I definitely have enough Echo, but I only have three Pogs. So I'm going to need five more of these. One, two, three, four. Oh, what, what did I run out of? Xenium. Xenium. Do I have any hidden? No. No, no Xenium. Hmm, okay. <laughs> well, that is a little bit annoying. That is with me, with me buying that one Pog just then in the black market. Okay, well, I need to get a Xenium, which means I'm gonna have to run a vault. Coral? Dead Coral? Really? That's a difficult one to get the, the Diorite Curse. It strikes when you least expect it. Look at this. I need Ink Sacks. I probably don't have the sugar cane. This is a disaster recipe. And then I definitely don't have the coral. I do have these things. I don't think I can grow these. No, not easily. All right, so I guess that means it's uh, it's time for an adventure out in the big world. I need to find a lukewarm motion, which, yes, there is one over here. That's That must surely be coral reef that I'm seeing there. Let's craft up one of these. I like to place down waystones and expand my world. Ah, uh, ha! Coral! Yay! I don't know how this works. Wait, I don't break it with silk touch, maybe? Then it just... Then it just breaks. How do I make it dead? Wait, 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 wait. I remember, I remember. Oh, oh, hello there, village. It's a very sophisticated, floating, man-made village. I shall place down my waystone here. A desert... Uh, ocean. Hello there, sir. <laughs> Inspecting. Inspecting this new mysterious object placed in your village. Hmm? If I just place this down, that will just die, right? Aha. Okay, and that is what I need. So, you know what? I've always wanted to learn this. This is silly, but I don't actually know how to get more of this. So if I go back home, real quick with my waystone system of doom, grab some bone meal. Can I bone meal to get coral somehow. Aha! I got it there! Okay, so on the side of a block I can get it. And I assume... Yeah, okay, I assumed that I was gonna be able to get the other coral as well. It's just a random chance, and since grass, sea grass can grow on top, it's a bit less likely. Alright, so if I... Can I move this thing? And I place it, say, here? <laughs> can I grow it on top now? Oh! Wait, wait what happened? <gasps> Wait, 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 can I just bone meal anything in this biome? Oh, I can! Huh, warm ocean. Okay, I'm, I'm taking notes for my own Minecraft knowledge because I don't actually know these things. Then I just plant these down and watch them die. It's, it's a pretty sad, a pretty sad reality to just see them turn gray. But it's getting dark. I don't want to put the villagers, the family members in danger. 32. Okay, is that is that good enough for you, Mr. Crystal? Yep, nice. And actually, let's return early in the morning to our newfound friends, and it's time to hunt some squid. Hello there! Great success. I wonder if my farm, my beautiful sugarcane farm of doom, has enough. It does not, but I think I had seven. I had seven, so that's actually enough. I have one piece of diorite. <laughs> I guess the fastest way to get there is to do this stupid recipe. <laughs> no, I can't do what? Oh, that's because I've compressed some cobblestone. I remember now. I only need one more. Like, I don't want two. Now I'm gonna have one too many. Again, which is disgusting. All right, let's not think about it. Craft the crystal. And actually, 
I think that this is a good opportunity to get into Catalysts. Catalysts allows you to modify your vault so that you can focus certain things down and you get these Catalyst Fragments in any vault that is not modified. And then the other part of the puzzle I need is Mystical Essence, this stuff here, which is quite expensive. It requires quite a bit of Beniotite to do this, but then again, this is one of the few uses for Beniotite. Then put them in here together with the Catalyst, and this will give me... Oh, that's perfect! That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the Plentiful one, which increases the amount of ores in any ore room. It's getting a lot of extended. There's another Plentiful. Nice. Okay, so I have two, three, four. Nice. Okay. I think I'm happy with that for now. The more of these you put on, of, of course, the more difficult the vault becomes because of the negative modifiers that stack. But also, this would increase my amount of ores by 80%. If I put on too many of these, my crystal will become cursed, and I don't really want that. So, so far no curses. That's looking good. Yeah, okay, so four plentiful and four random negative modifiers. 40% instability. And the instability doesn't matter once you run the vault. The instability is only there to describe how likely it is that the crystal either gets exhausted, which makes it unmodifiable, or that it gets cursed. Anyway, this should mean that there is plenty of ores inside this vault. Oh, that's not mining ores, but it's so good because of the black chromatic. I think... Whenever you see a black chromatic steel, you should do it if it's, like, not super hard. And this is super simple. Kill horde mobs? Yeah, I'll do that. And actually, another thing I should do is look to get a better magnet. A magnet with the copiously stat on it. So maybe this is where I do some crafting. A magnet costs nine magnetite ingots and one vault gold. Magnetite ingots are made from magnetite, raw magnetite, together with chromatic steel. So another reason to collect that. So I need nine per magnet, which means that I can craft a healthy amount of magnets, I suppose. Definitely have the gold for it. Put that in here, go to magnet and start crafting. Now, in the beginning, when you craft stuff in Vault Hunters, you are the beginner level. But as you craft things, this little proficiency stuff goes up, and so you become better and better in crafting. Although... I didn't even get to 1%, so 5 magnets is all I could craft with the materials I had right now. And the better you are at it, the more likely it is to be a higher rarity when you identify. I think the beginner one are very likely to just be scrappies. Let's see if we get lucky though. Nope, nope. Oh, we got a rare! <gasps> and it has to copiously roll on it, which I'm looking for. Oh, that's beautiful. That's absolutely perfect, actually. What can I add on top of that copiously roll? I could add... Yeah, like item rate. I could have trapped this arm for when I loot chests. Yeah, that's very, very smart. Trap this arm, eight of each. Get a high roll. 15% is great. Wow. That turned out to be a way better magnet than I was hoping for for only five crafts. Now you may be wondering, what does copiously do, Escal? A lot of people ask that when they see it. Copiously is a function that makes it so that you have a chance of doubling your output when you mine something. So, right now, I have 9.8% chance to double the outcome of my fortuned or silk touch, but in my case, fortuned ores inside a vault. This only works on generated ores. It doesn't work if you break it and then try and break it again. So, let's assume that I fortune a Xenium ore and get three. Well, if copiously procs, I would get six. Long story short, it's a very, very, very good stat. Anyway, this is my first real modified vault. I know I ran a gilded one, but I feel like this might be my first real, quote-unquote, uh, modified vault. I have kiwis. Yep. Time to go. Oh, it's a scavenger. The only reason I said all oh to that is because I want to focus on mining ores and scavenger is hard to complete if you have another focus. Anyway, let's have a look at the negative modifiers. We got rapid mobs, which makes them faster. We got draining, which messes with my mana region. Extra trap chests and shortened. Oh, we lost one minute in this vault. But we do have the extra 30 seconds that we got from the relic that I completed in the last episode. So 24 and a half minutes. And the strategy is, is to find ore rooms. And the fact of the matter is that this is actually a quite difficult scav, so I don't actually feel too bad about saying, you know what, the goal here is not to complete this, the goal is to just find my Xenium that I need. This an ore room? I think this might be an ore room. There's a dungeon there, I might actually check that out. Yep, this is an ore room. Hello there, I'm here to mine Xenium. I do so much damage with this axe, it's crazy. Oh, that's Xenium! Come on. Uh... I got one. I got one. Not the greatest. That's so funny. 
I think it was only one I needed to actually make my Echo Pog. But when in Rome, I might just as well mine. Because we are plentiful, there are a considerable amount more ores in every one of these veins. Aha, Scallium and Zine Pizza Night. That's there. That there was copiously proccing. That little sound, the little exciting sound, is whenever copiously procced. So on one of the gems that I mined with my hammer, I did get that proc. Oh, there's Apolline. Yep. And I'd got nothing. So that, that was a copiously proc on a zero gained fortune break. That can happen as well, of course. <laughs> By the way, is it ironic that this vault has actually got dead coral in it? <laughs> Aha! The bounty of killing the horde mobs completed. Ah, oh, I forgot to go into the dungeon. I was gonna go into the dungeon in the other room. Oh, but wait a minute. That's an illager one and challenging. Ornate. Mm, this is gonna be tough. They hurt a lot. Wait, but I have Blizzard. And Blizzard is great for these moments. Shoot that down. Oh, no, there's two archers. Freeze them! I can't see the cloud in here. It's too... <laughs> it's too... Too small of a room. Okay, and the back hurts. Yes, got that guy. And got that guy. Oh, it's so satisfying to shatter them like that. Alright, I guess I guess what I'll do is I'll just I'll just settle with having one room looted. Because when the difficulty is higher, the loot in the chests is also better. Although <laughs> was that it? I want more! No, I can't. I can't. I can't. That's that's such a dangerous one. I'm not built. I'm not built for dungeon hunting. I'm not strong enough. Guess what though? I'm str Excuse me? I was doing a thing. I'm strong enough to mine ores. Where did that guy come from? <laughs> Surprise baby. Or room number two completed. Oh, more distractions. There's another dungeon. Another challenging one. No. I don't want to do challenger illagers dungeons. Challenging zombie dungeons, maybe. But not illiter ones. Oh, wait. Yes, another ore room. And that's Ashium. I always get excited to find these legendary ones. Did I just, did I just one shot that tier 2 skeleton? My damage is great. Oh, back to back ore rooms. Nice. Look at this, the plentiful modifier shining through. That was uh, several, oh, more Ashium there. That was several legendary ones. <laughs> and even more is hiding. Oh, there's a zombie dungeon here as well. I am running out of time. Oh, that's impossible. Okay, let's, uh, let's just listen to the game. Impossible dungeons are truly difficult and dangerous. They expect to be one shot, especially if you play on the vault difficulty hard. Anyway, I just have two minutes remaining. And I'm, I think I'm a decent amount of way, time away from the start. One has to greet. I do have Kiwis. One minute, 19 remaining. Okay, I think I'm gonna head out. Uh, this is getting a little bit stressful. I couldn't have been that far away. I didn't think I was this far away, but... Yeah, this is not looking great. I better get the fruit out, and I, may, I might actually have to eat a lemon for this. Aha! Whew, okay, I was at least at the right on the right side of the portal. Oh, that got a that got a little bit stressful. GG, three hundred and twenty-one ores. That's not a bad haul. I'm happy with that. Let's see how I did in terms of gems. Wow, that's a lot. Of Lairmar and a lot of Benyotite. Only one Zenium though. I think, honestly, I think that was the only Zenium I found. I definitely saw Gorgonite and broke it. And I guess I got zero. That's also not good. Lots of Pizzanite and so much Ashium. 22 of one legendary gem. And then zero of some others. <laughs> That's the life of a Vault Hunter. Let's craft up one more Pog. And then I'm out of Zenium again. And an Echo. Pog. 
which means that I can now craft up the survival spawner. And I only need one of these, to be fair, so like it's a one-time investment. I mean, it could be fun to have more and it would make it faster, but one is sufficient. Now, in order to make this function, we are going to need to combine it with a spawn egg, which we get by using these mystery eggs. And they're found in completion crates and in living chests. They're quite rare. I've got 22 so far. Now I want to make a hostile mob spawner. So what I need to do is to turn them into a hostile egg instead, which requires a bit of resources, but I think, do I just craft all of them? Nah, let's do, let's do 10. And these, you, can, you can't just take these and put them in. These contain a random spawn egg. And the better the mob, like the harder the mob is to farm, the more rare they are. Some of the greatest pulls that we could do here is like a wither skeleton. A witch would be pretty good because that's redstone and gunpowder and sticks. And, and st sticks are important for stick man underneath the chest. Let's open these up and see what we get. That is, is that a stray maybe? Stray, yeah. I mean, that's not bad. That can generate bones. That is... I have no idea what that is. A pillager. Pillagers? Hmm. I think that's useless. I don't think pillagers actually drop anything. Is that another stray? Did I actually... Yeah, I got double stray. That's a drowned, which is great because that can produce copper and rotten flesh. Oh, that's a slime! That's a slimy boy! Yes! I think they're quite rare. And even though a slime farm is easy to make in the old world, that's a great pull. Is that skeleton? Skeleton, yeah. Okay, not very useful since we have the stray. That is... Donkey! No, it's a hostile one. It's a husk. Okay, also not very useful. Drowned are just better, I guess. Let's put the non-useful down here because they can be re-rolled later. That's another stray. So actually, I two of those are useless. Come on. Come on. I would really like a witch. That's another skeleton. Come on! Oh, it's something new. Is that like a hoglin? Piglin. Piglin brute. Ooh. I don't know what they drop, actually. Well, they look cool. <laughs> All right, I do have some more eggs that I could craft up. But I think this is a pretty good start. Because I wasn't looking for anything specific. I Basically, I want a catalog. I want a catalog of as many different mobs as I could possibly get. The way this works is, as I say, quite straightforward. You put it down and it can be picked up again, even without silk touch. So you can't break this thing. <laughs> I have to, have to craft a new one. So you can move it wherever. And then you open it up and then you put an egg inside here. And <laughs> that's slimy friendly. And then I believe that you can set it to, yeah, you can control it with redstone, which is this setting now. Or it can be always on. And in which case, it will check the... Oh, dear. Okay, stop. Stop. It's so fast. It's so fast. Stop. Stop. I love you guys. But please stop. <laughs> this is a very, very, very fast spawner. And... Uh, it's quite dangerous, to be honest. Quite dangerous if it, the, these are not contained and controlled by, by a machine. You guys got a lot of balls. Like... <laughs> Literally, lots of balls. <laughs> well, I guess uh, I guess I won't have slime ball issues in the future. Vector plates. These are made from chromatic iron in a stone cutter, and I'm gonna need like 81 of these. I think. I did mine a lot of uh, blairmar. I should have a lot of magic silk. These are the very basic ones, which lightly pushes mobs around. They also push the player around when placed down. Look at that, it's like, it's like a conveyor belt. I think the green ones are maybe sufficient, but yellow ones are cooler. Can I afford these? That's that's quite a lot of Laramar, actually. But I'm fine. I've, I've got over a thousand Laramar, so that should be good. Yep, that's 36. And these are considerably faster. Yep. The next here, just out of curiosity, oh, they cost the extraordinary Laramar. I think I'll stick to the yellow ones. So that's 64 plus 36. That's probably good. And then upgrade them to this. Hopefully I have enough Laramar. Yes. 64 plus 32. That should be enough vector plate to fill a 9x9 mob grinder. Now the engine of my sophisticated smart mob spawner of doom is going to be using modular routers. My, my favorite mod in the pack. Well... One of them, anyway. Model routers are so much fun to play around with. But this, this requires more chromatic steel. Did I say that chromatic steel is going to be important? 
This, yeah, that's gonna, okay, that empties my supplies of chromatic iron. Now, on their own, these don't do much, but they can be upgraded and tweaked and configured with all of these different modules to do pretty much everything, including activating things, right-clicking things, breaking blocks, distributing items, sending items, picking up items. Yeah, they're, they're, they're absolutely great. You're gonna be the brain of this sophisticated mob farm, which... I guess I'm ready to start building, and now that I have waystones, hello there. I don't really need this nether portal, but it is a prime spot of the camp, so I think I'm gonna take this down. <laughs> Vein miner is, is so very satisfying. Hmm, <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> I don't actually know if the survival spawner requires you to have the right light conditions. So for example, if I put a drowned in here. Oh, they spawn. Wait, wait, but drowned, drowned might spawn. What? Why are they not? Hello, sir? <laughs> they are not doing anything. Uh, drowned might actually spawn in daylight. What about skeletons? Skeletons should not spawn in light. They, they also spawn. Okay, so that's cool. I didn't actually know about that. I don't need to worry about light levels. Hmm, would then be quite cool to have like a big window up here and then let the mob spawn and fall down and then maybe, uh, <laughs> Apple Man, sorry, but you're probably gonna have to move. You can live over here with, by my friends, the, the animals. Here you go. <laughs> There's a new friend on the block. I think it's have some sort of entrance here and then like build, build the mob farm over top. Hello. I'm just here to uh, do some uh, glasscaping. <laughs> oh, that is just so satisfying. There's something about mining one thing and seeing another thing just being processed. <laughs> Wait, why does that look so cursed? <laughs> Nope. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. That is, uh, ah! It's better, but still very, very cursed. Let's we'll see. Let's we'll see what I do with that. The good thing is, is that I do like the idea of having this, like, almost like a monument up on the, up on the mountain. i design aside for a moment. This needs to be a 9x9 nine nine cube. Aha! And, yep, there's my entrance to this as well. Nice. <laughs> that looks, looks quite cool, actually. I like that. Now, ideally, I would like these mobs to be automatically killed as if they're killed by a player. So that I get experience and wither skeleton skulls once I get the wither skeleton skull egg. But the item I was planning on using for that, the player damage trap, this this thing here, costs another Echo Pog. Maybe the alpha version of my grinder will have to be like me killing the mobs. I mean, that's not a big deal because they spawn very, very quickly. If I could just like collect them and group them up to one area. An area in the back of two by three, like that. So what I need to do is install a floor with a hole and some nice illuminant lime block inverted. Maybe these can be in the floor because then they will shine down. And then my vector plates facing into that hole from all directions like this. And the lamps shine through these, I think. Yes, definitely. Aha! That's a lot of arrows, but now anything that lands in here is gonna get <laughs> shoved out to here. As far as the killing chamber goes, very vanilla. If I put some slabs here, I can just walk in and slap the mobs there. Hopefully. <laughs> that, looks, that looks like a mouth. Hello there. Hold on. It's Sir Killing Chamber. <laughs> Wait. Just add a little bit of a moustache. <laughs> That's so dumb. Sir Killing Chamber. Hmm? Hey, right, let's see if I can get this thing to actually function without being smart. By the way, we haven't built the brain yet. Oh, but I just realized I need an on-off switch, don't I? So, there is a very useful block in this mod pack. This here, the cog block. 
this is a block that can transfer a redstone signal through the blocks vertically or horizontally. So if I have them like that and then have a lever here and a redstone lamp for demonstration over here, they will turn on and send the redstone signal. So using these blocks is a, an easy way to, tri uh, to trigger the, the spawner itself. It's just going to look a little bit awkward because they're uh, copper, co copper colored, but this is the center and then I'll place it here. I think it spawns like two blocks above and two blocks below or something like that. It's, it's vanilla spawning mechanics. And that means that I have to have my redstone coming from the top here. So I'll have to place these like this. And for now, I'll just make a very, very, very rural, rudimental, rudimental on off switch like that. So redstone on and then with skeletons and then I should remove. Oh, <laughs> that was so fast. Pull the switch and yep, I'm getting skeletons. I'm getting lots and lots of skeletons. And actually for this to be efficient, I, I would actually need to have a sweeping sword, which I don't. You can't just enchant sweeping in World Hunters, you need to get it as an ethics. I am going to re-roll my legendary sword and hope to get sweeping. That's stunning, but a lot of extra damage. Maybe I can remove, yes. Oh, perfect. And then, can I craft sweeping? I can. Hope for a high roll. That's a low roll. I'll do it again. On, yes, 60%. That's good enough. There's still skeletons here. Okay, let's see how this works now. Yeah, that's much better. <laughs> much better. Now, just out of curiosity, if I were to install my drowned egg and flip the lever, then kill these guys, will I be getting trident by any chance? Copper and rotten flesh I knew about. Can I get trident? So that's the big question. I can! I just got one! Yay! I can get tridents this way as well. Oh, that's... That's brilliant. And... Fishing rods. <laughs> Useful. It works, but it's a bit rural. So, I think it's time to install the brain. And the first thing that I'm going to build is a system to take care of all the drops. From modular routers, I'm gonna want this thing here. A vacuum model. Oh, that's another pog. Uh-oh. Oh, come on! No! I need, I need more zedium! Unless, no, there's no, there's no poking here. There's, there's one of those, so I'll buy that. Ah, oh, well, that's, that's a little bit of a setback. Um, okay, d d switch of, switch of plans. Let's not start with the garbage disposal then. Let's start with a system that allows me to set the mob I want to spawn. I'm gonna need some modules. I'm definitely going to need a sender module. This will send an item from a router to somewhere, in this case the, 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 the spawner. And I also want a puller module, which does the opposite. It grabs something from an inventory into the router. Excuse me? I'm gonna say, you are adding to the monstrosity of the monstrosity monster. What do you, what do you say? Sir? Oh, he sells a globe! Wait! That's actually the most important thing in my life right now. Boom. Thank you, good sir. That's very nice of you. These, these are amazing. I shall put it, uh, <laughs> add to the monster. I shall put it right here so that I can see it. Okay, thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, I just had an idea. Hold on. Can I build from colossal? Yes, this thing. Uncolossal chest. Hold on. This is <laughs> the cutest thing ever. <laughs> This is just the perfect decoration for the monster. Let's put it right here. <laughs> for my for my most precious uh, belongings. Right, here's what I want to do. I want to have an inventory of some sort with all of my different eggs. And this will be my catalog of mobs to spawn. And then I guess I'll take one of these out and put somewhere and then press a button and that would just like swap it around. I'm gonna need one modular router somewhere and it doesn't really matter where these sits, but it has to reach, be able to reach this inventory and the spawner. And they do have some sort of max range, but that max range is 24. Okay, so we're probably good enough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to have this uh, puller module pull from my inventory, shift right click to select it, put it in here. Then I want this to be yeah, it's sending items now. I want this to be only when it has redstone. So now if I take this out and put it back, 
unless I give it a redstone signal, it's not going to do anything. But then when I give it a redstone signal, oh, it just took, it just took any egg from here now. Hmm. I guess it saves the order. Okay, so then I'm going to need one catalog inventory, <laughs> this barrel here, and then I'm going to need another inventory, uh, this barrel here, which I put an item in, or I put an egg in, and then it takes it and sends it to the spawner. Now to send it, I'm going to use the sender module and shift right click that, and then put that in here. So now this should, when powered, take an egg from this barrel and then send it to the to the thing. But that only works if the thing, the, the spawner, is empty. So I'm also going to need a puller module there and another router which uses that puller and then a sender to send it back to the catalog. And this should also only be with redstone. But yeah, it did take that egg and so now... Hmm, <laughs> now if I power this and then this, this should work. So let's try that out. So I power this, that should send an egg up to the, yep, yeah, egg up to the spawner. Nice, then I turn it on. And then when I'm done, I have to press this button. And that should suck that egg out and put it back into the catalog. Nice! It's a bit of a shame that I lack a Zenium to make the automatic loot handling, but it has given me another idea. I'm gonna make one more knowledge star. And then unlock trash cans. <laughs> this grants the trash transmog set as well, which is actually quite funny. <laughs> it's, it's, it's literally a bit a bit of my head. <laughs> anyway, with this, I can now craft a trash can, which is going to come in handy for all of the like bows and stuff like that. And I guess I'll have to manually put stuff in here. These are a bit dangerous, by the way. Basically, if you put something in here, it just deletes it. Gone. Forever. You, can, you can put a little filter here if you want to, so that, for example, I can say that I only want to trash item shells. Now I can't put gunpowder in here, but I can put this in here. But uh, there are a lot of items that, uh, that needs to go in. Anyway, great success. And it fits there, because <laughs> everything it looks a little bit, uh, a little bit janky. It needs, <laughs> it needs a little bit of a facelift. I may have got a little bit carried away because I changed everything. This is the new design. Ah, <laughs> the scallium skull of the monster. And inside the monster, a dungeon. Scary, scary, creepy dungeon. I also completely remade the redstone mechanism. Check this out. I've got my catalog here. Let's take out, for example, a skeleton. And then to spawn the skeleton, I put it on this pedestal. <laughs> um, then I perform a ritual, I jump around it once, and then pull the lever. And that starts the, sends the skeleton up and then starts the machine. And here are skeletons getting grinded in this mob grinder. And then to turn it off, I just do that. And now the farm is off, but also the egg is put back in the catalog. And then I take the bows and throw over here because I don't have resources to automatically deal with the loot just yet. I like it. Now this is still using two modular routers and pretty much the same methods that I showed over here. But uh, one of them is over here and then I have, since I only have one signal, I take it down here and I invert it using a torch over here. Which then pulses the empty machine, so when, when I flick the lever off, this gets a signal and it grabs the egg that was, that's in there. Pretty much straightforward, but this is also why I really, really, really love modular routers. They are just so great! You can do so many things with them. Um, also, that's not very pretty, so what I've done is I've crafted a camouflage upgrade. And if I right click on a shift right click on a block, I can set it to that block and then put that in here. And ah, it's gone. It's coarse dirt now. I can still interact with it though. All in all, I'm super happy with this. Hmm. I happen to have a spare stray spawn egg and a name tag. Ricardo. My plan is to put Ricardo in this cage. And I've only got one shot, but I think if I shift click here with the egg. Yes. Okay. Ricardo. Ricardo is trapped. Yes! Hello, sir! <laughs> you, you will be the grinder's uh, main prisoner. The only prisoner. <laughs> Anyway, all in all, this is this this is a really, really, really good upgrade to the base. Because now 
I'm, I'm gonna be hunting those mystery eggs and try and get my catalog to be completely full. I just love it though. I've got copper income, rotten flesh, bones, string, all of that stuff is now sorted out. I mean, granted at the moment it's manual, but we'll get there. We'll get to the upgrade part eventually. But anyway, that's gonna do it for today. And here's a funny realization. I have spent a lot of resources today, look at this. I've got six chromatic steel remaining and no chromatic iron, pretty much five. And I've spent nearly 200 vault diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> resources are important in Vault Hunters, but yeah, I've, I've had a lot of fun. So anyway, that's gonna do it for today. I really do hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please do hit the like button down below. And if you're brand new, consider subscribing. And I will see you in the next episode.